What do you mean by humanitarian imperialism? All right, the mayor. Humanitarian imperialism is a new trend done by organizations, especially the big, powerful organizations who are working in third world countries and try to dictate their ideology, their culture, dictate their projects to the local community, sometimes without consultation. They want to change the culture, they want to change the faith, they want to change the social infrastructure of the local community without consulting the local community themselves. We are no different, we are no different to countries who are conquering other countries because they have the military power, the economical power, or other powers. In the material field, we we'll find it over the last 50 years. If we talk about the case study of Somalia, Somalia over the last 25 30 years is affected by famine every two, three years. The international community, including the Muslim organizations, spend more than 50 billion dollars in Somalia, but they have not built the local community. And this year, Somalia, Ethiopia, and South Sudan are affected by drought since last year, and they could face famine. If those international community organizations and Muslim organizations spend the money or a portion of the money to build the local community, to train them, to empower them, okay, to make them independent, but instead we created the dependency syndrome. So every year, in and out, they have the handout from us. And this is what we call a humanitarian imperialism. Unfortunately, a sizable number of the Muslim call or the so-called Muslim charities, international Muslim charities, are doing the same. Because they are dictated by the donor. The donor in certain countries dictate the project. And we know the traditional projects. The donor want to go to heaven only through building a mosque, not through building community. Okay? So such donor need to be educated by the organization. And such organization need to be telling him this is not right, even if they don't get the money from him. And our organization as Muslim charities should understand that the risk and the money is in the hand of the creator not the hand of the donor. Once we tell the donor, we educate the donor to listen to the local community and let the project to be designed by the local community, here we empower the local community and we make them independent, not dependent on us. What we need to create now, stronger local organizations. Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sudan, South Sudan, Kenya, Somalia, Syria, Iraq, North Africa, South Africa, East Africa, Malaysia, everywhere, Latin America, everywhere. But those are the people who own the money we have. Another footnote for the Jumia, you know who pays the salaries? of the CEO and the president of such organization. You know who pays the salaries and the food of the conferences and the mortgage for those deposits? You know who are they? Number one is the goat, the sheep, the cow, and the donkey. You know why? Because when we market each of these animals, we take the admin cost, administration cost, to keep our organization to pay the salary of those people. 
So the one who pays the salary for the CEO is the donkey and the goat. Needless to say, as well, the poor, the orphans, the widow, and the sick. Because for every project we do, we take an administration to sustain our operation and organization. So really, when we look at it this way, hey people, who are you? You are paid by the donkey. You are paid by the orphan. You are paid by the displaced. You are paid by the refugee. Wake up. Wake up and don't think that you own the money of the organization. Don't become an occupying force to force the society to change by force. But you have to be the mean to empower such a local society to build the resilience and make them independent and be as good as you are or maybe better than you are. Clear? Thank you.